Hey, this is Warren Bird on the subject of five innovative practical ideas from senior leadership teams in five very different exciting churches. And I have with me a Ryan Hartwick, Dr. Ryan Hartwick of Azusa Pacific University, a dean, a professor of communications, and a the lead author with me of Teams That Thrive in Varsity Press. And uh, we did a lot of church visits, a lot of church surveys. Before we get into the five practical, innovative ideas, uh, five of the best ideas in the book. Ryan, welcome. Tell us just a nutshell about where we got these churches from. Thanks, Warren. It's great to chat with you. Yeah, these churches came out of a, about a two-year study that we did of over 250 churches with over a 1,000 leadership team members responding and offering us some data in, in several different ways. We we're actually able to work with 145 churches who did everything that we asked them to do and gathered us an incredible data set from, uh, to work with. We then went out and did a bunch of site visits, a bunch of interviews as well. And so, yeah, we're really excited about the data we have to share. All right, let's jump in then to idea number one, innovative practical idea that other churches could try to improve their senior leadership team. Idea number one starts right where you are in Los Angeles. Yes, this is from a church called Cornerstone West LA. And this church did something very simple um, to try to help them to, to be able to do more collaboration together. Uh, the, the, in, the, in the old setup, they had all these different individual offices. And in fact, one of the lead pastors had a very, very large office. And so the people, the, the staff members, like in probably many churches, would work alone in these offices and then come together into a meeting room when they wanted to collaborate. These guys wanted to shift that. And so what they did was they took the largest office and they shoved five or six different desks in that office so that the status quo is that these guys are working together. And they can just kind of, if they, they're working on something, they have a question and say, hey, um, what do you think about this idea? Or I just want to run this past you. Or I'm kind of stuck here. Can you give me, can you give me a hand with that? And then if they need the individual uh, study time or they need to have an individual conversation, they had some smaller spaces that they could then they could then go into and have those conversations or have that study time. But it really just kind of flips it here, right? So so we, we talk about this in um, in the chapter called "Build a Culture of Continuous Collaboration" in our book, where the where the, these 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 pastors are really taking steps to make sure that we're constantly working together rather than kind of having to work hard to find ways to be together. And the person who wrote the Forge Our Book, Dave Ferguson, Community Christian Church, has that same approach uh, in his office. Idea number two of innovative practices that we found that other churches can copy for their senior leadership team crosses the country to Newark, Delaware. Yeah, this is from a church there called the Journey Church. Uh, I spent some time with them, and they, they, they do these quarterly planning meetings with their leadership team. They'll come together for a half day and kind of talk about some key issues that are going on in the church and moving forward. What I was really impressed with at the beginning of that meeting is the lead pastor put five sheets of flip chart paper up on the wall and wrote, and wrote, wrote five words at the, top, at the top of each one, mission, vision, creed, target, and culture. And then what he did is he, he, he had a different member of the leadership team go up there and write down the mission or the vision or the culture, their culture statement, and talk through what that meant. And it really was this, this, this great uh, centering moment where as they were going to have these conversations, really key conversations, making strategic decisions over the course of that day, they wanted to make sure that they were able to say, here's what we're trying to do. Here's why we're here. Here's, here's the decisions we've already made and ensuring that we're all centered here. And so it centered the team, but, but also what was really impressive is it wasn't just the lead pastor reminding the staff of here's what we do and here's how we do it. But it was this, it was this shared, um, a shared element here of all of, the, all of the team members kind of catching one another up and reminding one another of here's what we're doing and here's why we do it. And that senior pastor, Mark Johnson, is actually the closing sentence of our book. We had a great quote from him, and he said, I used to lead our church. Now I lead our team, and they lead the church. Idea number three takes us uh, to Morristown, New Jersey, Liquid Church. Uh, Tim Lucas is the pastor there. And uh, it echoes uh, chapter eight, where one of the five uh, collaborative disciplines of uh, effective church leadership is leveraging the differences in the team membership. And their senior leadership team is an interesting mix. It is not taking just who are the top people on the organizational chart, drawing a circle and saying you're the lead team, but it's a very thoughtful 
okay, we need a person like this, a person like that. So as a result, they have a diversity of age, of experience, of uh, homegrown uh, uh, versus uh, outside uh, clergy trained, uh, a, a, a very effective mix of four people on their senior leadership team, uh, intentionally chosen, and that diversity uh, leads to a great senior leadership team. Ryan, anything you want to add, because you were there with me on that visit to Liquid Church, before we go back to our fourth stop in Arizona? Yeah, I would just say real briefly, it was really cool how they, they realized that they needed different kinds of things. So they looked in different pockets. Uh, I think oftentimes we'll go and, and churches look in the same pocket um, for certain kind of folks. They say, um, we, we want to really develop people internally. So we always look internally for staff. We always go externally or something like that. But they realized, hey, we, we're going we're gonna to tap into all those different ponds to make sure we get the right mix. Great. Okay, take us to innovative idea number four. Yeah, this comes from a Pure Heart Christian Fellowship in Arizona. As I, as I observed their leadership team meetings, it was, it was fascinating how the lead pastor consistently deflected uh, questions that would come to him. I think the temptation oftentimes, if, if you get asked a question, is to answer that question. Um, but so often in these meetings, uh, a question would be posed to me and say, I, I don't know that I really need to answer that question. What do you think about that? Or how about we talk about that as a team? Or I'd really like you to take that back to your team who's working on this on the ground. And why don't you come back with, 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 a, with a, de a determination, a way to move forward there? Um, I don't know that I really need to answer that question. And so really what he was trying to do is trying to create space where other people could be involved in leading the church rather than him making all of those decisions. Um, we talked about that. We'll take that up in chapter nine, which is our chapter on leadership, relying on inspiration more than, more than control to lead. And this lead pastor there very much did that. Great. Final specific innovative idea and practice is from Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah, at a church called Faith Promise Church. Uh, as I was observing them and, and listening to that, why they do their leadership teams the way that they do, they told me that, that, that several years ago they had realized that they were holding their meetings during a time when the staff was, was just tapped. They just did not have the energy that they needed. Even though they had always held these meetings on this particular day, they realized that, that was just not a good time during the week um, because of the, the, the staff members' energy level and so on. So it was cool to see there is that they, they didn't kind of stick to tradition or to history or the way that something has always been done, but really said, okay, what's the optimal time for us to meet together so that we can, we can come to the table and have the best discussions and, and really be able to move the church forward in the best way possible. And so they're willing to kind of tweak with whatever. I mean, a simple, a simple thing like a meeting time, but really what we find is that, that great, great teams are willing to tweak with whatever they need to, need to tweak to be able to become most effective to really lead their church as well. Great. Five innovative practices from the book. And if you go to the website, teamsthatthrivebook.com, there's a self-assessment that you can do on your church to kind of find out, you know, how are you doing? Are, are you strong? What areas are you strong in terms of, uh, of uh, your leadership uh, team and uh, your practices? Yeah, absolutely. I'd really encourage you to go there. Check out this assessment. It's really easy for you to download. You can print off a copy for all of your team members, very easily collect that, tally those results, and really see some areas of strength and some areas of improvement. And then hopefully, if you, if you, if you check out the book, you can, you can find some ways to improve, take some steps to help your leadership team really thrive. This is Warren Bird and Ryan Hartwick, teamsthatthrivebook.com. Thanks for joining us.